Hi, it's Brian. Welcome to the Awards Contender, and I'm so excited to welcome Andrew Campbell back today to do another 1999 Rewind, one of my favorite films of, I would say, the first half of 1999 is Office Space, written and directed by Mike Judge. How are we doing, Andrew? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me on again. I'm very excited to talk about this movie that I had, like, really only seen in bits and pieces over many, many years. So I'm happy I got to, like, actually took time to sit down and watch it and got to see what all the hype and all the talk was about and all the memes and all the Halloween costumes, which I saw <laughs> even last year. I saw Halloween costumes of this movie. So it's kind of nice to kind of be in the know now. Yeah, so did you know Office Space was initially inspired by that character, Milton? Uh, originally, Mike Judge did a cartoon series about oh. that character, and it was on Saturday Night Live uh, for a while, and that's oh. where the genesis of Office Space came from. It's that character, not like Peter or anyone else. Oh, okay, that's interesting. That's phenomenal. I, I did not know that at all. The studio, obviously, really wanted a big star for the lead role. And apparently, mm -hmm. Mike Judge talked to Matt Damon about playing Oh, wow. Role. And that would have changed the movie in a big it way. It would have, yeah. Like, in 99, like, Matt Damon was already a star from Good Will Hunting. And oh, yeah. he just been in Saving Private Ryan. I don't know if, uh, if that would have made the movie better <laughs> if it had been, like, a big star in that role. I think you needed someone weird. not as well-known to play that yeah. in a movie like this. When Mike Judge went to the studio, 20th Century Fox, and said, I want this kind of no-name Ron Livingston to play the lead role, they signed off on it, but they said, you have to get a star to play the girlfriend. And so that's kind of why Jennifer Aniston is in this movie. They needed somewhat of a name. This came out in year five of Friends, so she is huge at this point. Oh, yeah. Jennifer Aniston had done a few movies before this. None of them had been breakout hits by any means. So her yeah. participating in a February release as a supporting role, that was not going to bring tons of people in the theater necessarily. No. They didn't even put her on the poster, Andrew. <laughs> I mean, watching this again, I was struck by the dry humor, as you said, and how scenes play out for three, four, five minutes, and there's almost no score in this movie. Yes! It's like scene None. to scene. Mike Judge just lets this story play out without a lot of bells and whistles, and I really love that about it. I think if this movie were made today, there'd be a lot more score. There's like a couple montages in the movie with like a song playing over. The rap there music, I love that part. It's always that rap really music. Funny. But I'm like, here is something from 1999 I don't think we would see today where it really is quiet. At such a short length, 89 minutes, it still kind of takes its time letting you get to know the characters and it's not moving super fast. Everybody in the audience with their ADHD, you know, it's like, know, it's, it's, it takes anymore. its time, which I admired. I feel like this movie now is even becoming more relevant with the pandemic and everything. Mm. Everything has really changed with the way we work and our expectations for our bosses, expectations of salary, our benefits. That's completely changed over the past, what, four years now. It's crazy to see, like, one, things haven't changed that much. Man, like, it's always been this way. It's, I mean, it's, it's upsetting. Like, the part where he makes one mistake and eight, he has eight bosses who come tell him, you made a mistake. And he's like, oh, I've never done this before. <laughs> I was just like, think. I was like, there we go. That is a good example because that happens all the time. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of great things about Office Space. I think the reason it became such a phenomenon years after it opened and it's still very relevant, as you say today, is the statement it makes about office culture, about people just kind of sleepwalking through their lives, not enjoying their job. And they just, they have to be there to, to make rent and get a paycheck and... I don't know if too many films before this had made that kind of commentary, whether it was a comedy or a drama. Like, it never had made that kind of point the way that Office Space does. And 25 years on, it's absolutely still relevant. People still have mm -hmm. these jobs. And as you say, with the pandemic and how that's kind of changed um, some of the landscape, you know, of the workforce. And so that's why this movie still works. I was watching it yesterday. I'm like, there's really nothing that dated about this movie. Like, it's not. I mean, I mean, there's like some of the technology stuff and, mm -hmm. 
you know, the the printer and <laughs> certain things, like, you can tell that's from the 90s, but it's, it, yeah, you're not watching it cringing in any way. It still works really no. well today. Another thing I think makes this movie relevant and, and still lasts really well is that it's an R-rated comedy. I think if he had yeah. tried, if Mike Judge had tried to make this PG-13 and kid-friendly, the profanity throughout this movie is also really fantastic in terms of this specific kind of dry humor. If we had to take out every F word and it was a little bit more watered down, I don't think mm -hmm. the movie would be as big of a hit today and as lasting today as, as it has. I do think the R-ratedness of Office Space is also important. So let's talk about a couple other characters we love. I mean, uh, Bill Lumberg, the boss, played by Gary Cole. I mean, I, I knew when I saw this movie opening day, I was like, okay, this character is fr freaking fantastic. This guy's great. <laughs> this is, he's so know? good. <laughs> and if you've seen Gary Cole and other things, this is not him. Like, he's playing a character here. He is oh, a very yeah. good, he's a very good dramatic actor. I've seen him in a ton of movies and TV shows. And uh, apparently Mike Judge wasn't very satisfied with that character. But then Gary Cole came in to audition and Judge was like, oh shit, like he's going to make this really good. And he does. <laughs> what do we like about the Gary Cole performance, the Lumberg character in this? He made me very angry. Oh my God. <laughs> like what, what it is, he makes you angry without trying hard. If he leaned on one more desk, I swear to God, uh, that was just like his body language of just like, yeah, so I'm going to need you to come in. It's annoying me. It's an hour long and I'm annoyed as hell. I can't even imagine having to hear that, you know, every single day in your job. Yeah, I feel like another resonating thing about this movie is most people in their lifetime have had a boss or a coworker who acts like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have one memory of an early job I have. I won't say who it was. But yeah, that just kind of drawl, kind of like, okay, yeah, hey, what's happening? Um, so yeah, we're going to need you to come in on Saturday. Also... Sunday <laughs> and just walks away and you're like, are you serious right now? <laughs> and, just, and, no and it never changes. Like he talks the changes. exact same way the whole movie. We have to say a few words about Steven Root as Milton. I mean, it, it, it makes sense to me that this was the genesis of the movie, that character, but you can't have a 90 minute movie with that character in the lead role. No. That wouldn't work. So I think he's in the movie just the right amount. Mm -hmm. And again, Steven Root is a fantastic character actor. So and like he is one of the best parts of Office Space. Like the Absolutely. way he portrays that character, you can believe that there are people like that in this world who just kind of sit in their cubicle and they don't really have any social life and they're kind of weird and they just kind of mm -hmm. mumble and they play their music and they just do their work and go home. And even though it's kind of an outlandish character in some ways, like it's still believable enough Absolutely. to where you buy into it. You understand why he does what he does at the end of the movie. And I like that his character plays an integral role in the narrative. He's not just like this weird side character we yeah. don't spend any time with. So what did you think of uh, Milton in Office Space? Well, I felt for him really bad. People treat him so horribly. It made me really sad. When they asked him to move his office and he... I was waiting for the moment for him to just outburst and like start yelling. Everyone didn't... I mean, didn't, technically didn't happen. It did kind of happen, but... It, it broke my heart when he was downstairs in the storage room. And then when he asked them to go, like, get rid of the rat or the crop croaches, wherever they were, the, the pest problem. And the cake part pisses me off, too. It's like, why oh, doesn't he get yeah. his fucking cake? <laughs> you, okay, you, I have. This, this also hit me in a way as well. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like he's also a reason why this movie's so great. Without that character, I don't think it's as long-lasting as it is even mm -hmm. though he's not the protagonist, of course. I think a lot of other directors with this story, this material, would have focused on Peter all the way through, maybe gave a little bit to supporting characters, but Mike Judge really gives a lot of scenes to Milton, and he becomes this very important character in the second yeah. half. And I think that's also why this movie, for me, is so great. <laughs> like, like, we yeah. give time to Milton as well as our protagonist. We haven't really talked about like our favorite scenes. Like, if you had to pick like your favorite scene in Office Space, like what would be the scene that really stood out to you? Destroying the printer was a really great scene. Also very relatable. I would love to destroy a printer. Oh my God. Because those things just, printers never work when you need them to. Like printers are always listening. It's funny, and people still say that these days. And so the fact that printers are still the way they are, they're still acting up. 
is ridiculous. Yeah, that's a great scene. I also love the scene where Joanna flips off her boss, who is played by Mike Judge. That is a scene that Mike Judge added to the script after Jennifer Aniston had signed on to the movie. He wanted to give her a couple more scenes, and that was something that came later. I I think that's her best scene in the movie, and it's one of the most memorable. Like, she is fantastic there with all of the frickin' flare crap. Like, she finally just tells off her boss and flips him off. I think that's a really great scene, too. Yeah. So, Office Space came out February 19th of 99. Uh, it opened in 1,700 theaters. It grossed only $4 million, which made its eighth place that weekend. So, it did not open well. The reviews were very strong, Andrew. Most of the reviews from the nation's film yeah. critics liked it. At the very worst, it was kind of like uh, middle of the road, like a C or two stars. Many of them enjoyed it. Roger Ebert gave a thumbs up. And so there was word of mouth starting to grow in those first couple weeks. But the problem was Office Space, it opened so poorly that first weekend that it just couldn't hang on. And by mid-March, it was basically gone. And I think if Office Space had opened a little bigger... And it could have hung on just a little bit longer. I think like the word of mouth could have grown enough to where the movie could have started building. I think if Office Space had opened in July and there was better marketing, a better poster, everybody knew Jennifer Aniston was in it, it would have opened a little bigger. Maybe not a lot, but it would have done better in the summer, I do think. Dead of winter, no one is going out and doing much, hanging out with friends. It's cold. They don't want to do much people hang out a lot more in the summertime so i do feel like that adds on to word of mouth it's, it is funny to have january and february just like yeah like he's in the dumping grounds for movies yeah so the movie opens it bombs it's gone by march and basically everyone involved in office space is like okay well that's that it didn't do well let's move on to other projects uh, mike judge went to work on another script and he was just like okay well Hopefully we do better next time. And then it wasn't immediate. It wasn't like by the end of 99, it was like this huge hit on home video or anything. It took three to four years. Like it started airing on Comedy Central and then the DVD started doing better and better and better. So it really did become a cult classic. I mean, I would say one of the top two or three films of 99 that bombed hard opening weekend at the theater, but then became this phenomenon later. Office Space is one of those. As of 2003, four years later, it had sold 2.6 million copies on VHS and DVD. Wow. In that same year, it was in the top 20 best-selling DVDs at Fox. And this is like not a new movie in 03. This is a four-year-old movie. So people by 03 had really come to find and love this thing. And so why do you think, Andrew, why is this movie one that took a few years to catch on? I would think maybe dry comedy became a little more mainstream. I feel like Napoleon Dynamite came out in what, 2003, 2004? I always think because I think Napoleon Dynamite was one of the first like dry humor movies I saw that I like did find funny. So I think this is, I think love and appreciation for dry humor just got, started getting more and more uh, loved and Office Space was just, who knows, maybe a little bit ahead of its time with the humor. And I think The Office, the show The Office, I think it kind of continued that dry humor that Office Space did so well. And that's probably another reason why Office Space continues to work for people. Because, as you said, it, like people weren't really prepared for that kind of humor in an American R-rated comedy in 99. Now, Andrew, this is the awards contender. How many awards do you think Office Space won? <sighs> With how poorly it did in the box office and how long it took to get popular, I would like to say probably zero. (laughs) Office Space, Andrew, did not get a single award nomination for anything. Man. Nothing at MTV Movie Awards or Teen Choice Awards or like people's, like nothing. Like if you go on IMDb, the only awards it got were for like later dvd releases and things dvd there's nothing the year. <laughs> there's nothing in 99 or 2000 like oh wow nothing yeah. like we talked about like she's all that which we talked about last time that got some wins at like teen choice awards and kids choice awards and things office space in 99 it's as if it didn't exist <laughs> well i want to say i'm surprised but i guess 
popularity, I guess. It could have gotten like an MTV Movie Award nomination yeah. for something. Best villain? For something. Lumberg? <laughs> <laughs> today but, it would. Yeah. I think today it would. Not a big awards contender for Office Space, sadly. All right, Andrew, any final thoughts about Office Space? What would be your kind of final summation of this movie? I definitely think it's aged well with the times, for sure. Milton is the absolute standout character for me. Love him very much. And yeah, I mean, I think it overall is very silly, very fun. I enjoyed it, for sure. Yeah, this is a movie that could have just gone away, that nobody really mm-hmm. discovered later. It, it Some people enjoy it. It has its fans, but it came and went, and it's not really talked about 25 years on. For me, like of all the films that opened in theaters in February of 99, and there's like 10 or more, This is the one that we're still talking about and celebrating, and for good reason. It's fantastic. It's one of my favorite comedies of the late 1990s, and it was such a blast to revisit it and talk about it with you today. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah, as we wrap up here, uh, tell our viewers where they can find you online. Yeah, so um, my uh, username is arcampbell94 on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Letterbox as well. You can check out what I'm watching. I do movie ratings on my Instagram stories. And I just saw Madam Web. If you want to see my uh, review for that, go ahead and see that. It's a, it's a goodie. Um, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and subscribing. And let me know in the comments below what you think of Office Space. Can you believe... This great comedy is 25 years old. We'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.